This is the fourth of four videos concerning an idea to create a guidance head that can be retrofit to an unguided mortar, and specifically the autopilot part. The autopilot is arguably the single most important piece to make the mortar hit the target. The clip-on head has to be provided by somebody else, but if they did, here's the present situation. Okay, this is a plan view of the engagement area. You can see where the mortar is launched from down here. It's, the, it's at the small green rectangle. So let's first see where the unguided mortar rounds land relative to the target when the mortar launch direction has an effective error of, let's say, plus or minus 7 degrees in azimuth and plus or minus 6 degrees in elevation. And that error window is meant to account for all the error factors like wind, mortar physical steadiness, variation of uh, round muzzle velocity, and so on. So the hit points form a square-sided patch on the ground centered on the target. Now let's center the graph on the, uh, on the target so we can zoom in for a closer look at where the hit points are relative to the target. So bottom line, the unguided rounds just don't hit anything. The mean miss distance is 420 meters, uh, plus minus 468 meters in 459 runs. Now let's look at the hit points for a guided mortar using, I'll call it autopilot solution A, where the mean miss distance goes from unguided 422 meters to solution A, the mean miss distance is 98 meters. Then solution B, which gives 60 meters. Then solution C, which goes to a mean distance, miss distance of 35 meters. But 35 meters isn't close enough to kill a tank. The bottom line is that although these guidance solutions A, B, and C get progressively better, they just don't hit the target. They're all landing long. So let's take a look at autopilot option D with no other changes. The mortar hit points are now this little blue dot entirely inside the target. The mean miss distance is 0.59 meters plus or minus 0.19 meters in 659 runs. And I added an inset to show the miss distance probability density function for each case. And I looked at how the distribution of hits changes as the mortar maximum lateral acceleration is changed from half a G to one G to two Gs. And I think the half a G case is realistic, but it's interesting that all three are basically the same. The mean miss distance is about 0.6 meters and the standard deviation is about plus or minus 0.2 meters. I also added uh, a feature to zoom on the hit points relative to the target center, which in this case is a Russian T-90 tank. It's about eight meters long by six meters wide. Maybe it's interesting to compare flight paths for unguided and guided rounds. Unguided rounds are shown in black. Guided rounds are shown in teal. What's missing? Target motion, body side slip, CCD aim point noise, and a validated aerodynamics model. But I think the filter I have in right now is probably realistic, pretty realistic. I decided to have a look at the effect of target motion. So population generation looks like this. In each case, uh, the tank drives in a straight line away from a common starting point at a random speed, about 70 kilometers an hour, plus or minus 20 kilometers an hour in a random direction. The mortar launch error is also random, plus or minus seven degrees in azimuth and plus or minus six degrees in elevation, which seems pretty sloppy. These are pretty big errors, but anyway. To make this perfectly clear, what you're looking at is a planned view of the engagement, and that little moving rectangle is a tank. That's a single simulation of a tank driving away from a center position, and the simulation stops, and the tank stops, when the mortar hits the ground. And the position of the tank is the uh, teal colored uh, rectangle, and the, uh, uh, there's a red dot uh, where the mortar landed relative to the tank at the end of the run. And the final population looks like this. It makes a ring. A graph of single run miss distance versus target speed looks like this, where there's no aiming error from the mortar, and uh, if the round can pull half a G. As, anyway, as the speed goes up, the miss distance goes up, unsurprisingly. Back to the final data set, the miss distance PDF looks like this. The mean miss is 3.15 meters plus or minus 0.71 meters in 831 runs. Zooming in, here are the uh, hit points overlaid on the tank. Uh, they form a circle because the heading direction of the tank is random. Now this suggests to me that the rounds are nearly all hitting the back half of the tank, the trailing half of the tank, 
which is about what I'd expect for a zippy target. Now, it's easy to check that, though. Just repeat the experiment with a tank driving along a fixed heading with the same variation of speed and mortar launch angle error. And this turns out to be the case. Most of the rounds do land in the back half of the tank target. And this concludes a summary of the statistical results for a project to produce an autopilot for a guidance head that can be retrofit to garden variety unguided mortars.